It's Wednesday, April the 21st, 2021. This is the date in the calendar for the commemoration of Anselm of Canterbury, theologian. Now, he may not be a very familiar individual, but he uh, uh, is a good reminder that we rejoice in how the Lord blesses his church through the servants of the church, whether they be lay or, in this case, Anselm, who was a pastor. Uh, Specifically with Anselm, uh, I would take note of two big things regarding him. One, he wrote a uh, specific treatise, a, a doctrinal work that was, Why Did God Become Man? And there he set forth that the reason for the incarnation of Christ was also that he could bring about our salvation, that he could suffer and die, that we might have forgiveness, life, and salvation. So a very straightforward treatise, but it also was of high significance in its time and still has significance today as well. The second thing is this, is that uh, he really uh, was rather instrumental in setting forth that the oversight of the church ought not go through the secular authorities, but through the church itself. Uh, and that, of course, seems pretty straightforward to us, but that was actually something that had to be uh, debated and discussed in his day, and he held sway in a very positive way in that regard. And that also segues nicely to our topic for today. It is Wednesday, after all, and that means we are listening to the small catechism. We've been making our way through the commandments, and now we are specifically ready for the fourth commandment that all deals with God's gift of authorities, and so Anselm's work really funnels into this nicely. So you'll remember that the fourth commandment specifically says, honor your father and your mother. Let's also, of course, rejoice in the catechism's faithful rendering of the meaning of that very commandment. We should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Now, I pray that you're like me, that you can rejoice truly in the parents that God has given you, because I was given faithful parents who not only raised me in the faith, but also who have provided for all my needs and raised me so that I could uh, have everything that I need. But uh, there is, uh, even amongst those of us who have been blessed with good parents, we can recall times as children where we didn't recognize the blessing that they were for us. And so we would maybe even despise them, or we would take actions that would anger them, and we'd even know that it would anger them, and that was what motivated us to do that very thing. Probably more common than that is our uh, actions in spite of, of the other authorities that God has set in our life, that we despise them. And so we take actions to anger them rather than honor them and love and cherish them. So that might be your employer. There's an authority that God has set in your life and you uh, look with uh, anger upon that employer. It could also be the civil authorities that you uh, believe are completely wrong-headed in any number of decisions. It could be, uh, you may recall a time when you were a student and it was the teachers who were set over you that angered you and such. But God certainly calls upon us to cherish those in authority over us. And that's for good reason. For example, you may recall that back in Exodus chapter 20, where God gives this commandment, he not only says, honor your father and your mother, but also he says that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You maybe even had uh, to memorize it that way when you were learning this as a child. And I think there's a good reason for uh, to include that when we set this in our memory is that we recognize that there is a result, that when you honor your father and mother, in general, it really goes well for you. Because God has put father and mother, other authorities over you for your blessing, not for your harm. Now, parents are imperfect. Other authorities are imperfect. They're going to make mistakes. There's going to be things they do that uh, do create challenges for you. And some are going to be downright scandalous. There are parents out there who um, regularly fail in their calling to provide for their children. But in general, parents are a blessing for their children. That's why God has given them. And so it's a good result that usually comes from heeding a parent's instructions. A parent will often tell their child, hey, I've been around the block a few times. I understand what's going on here. So listen to me because I'm not trying to make your life difficult. I'm trying to give you good guidance so that you don't end up with difficulties. So there's a positive result. Also keep in mind for this. 
The commandments may be divided into two sections. The first table or tablet of commandments, commandments one through three, all deal with specifically how you relate to God. So you could think of it as this uh, vertical relationship. Commandments 4 through 10 all deal with your relationship with your fellow human being, your neighbor. And so therefore, uh, this, the horizontal relationship. And it's interesting that the very first thing that God brings up when he deals with our horizontal relationship is the fourth commandment. Your parents as the primary authority within your life, but then other authorities as well. Because these are the primary means by which he brings order to our lives so that our lives might flourish and that we might live long in the land that the Lord our God gives us. So let's rejoice in the gift of authorities. For example, in Romans chapter 13, while the civil authorities are specifically in mind, you can say this is true about all authorities. God not only says that all authority that exists has been established by him, but they're established for the purpose of doing good to you. Have you ever noticed that uh, we are tempted at times to say that, you know, government is a necessary evil. My employer is a necessary evil, or we'll say that about other authorities as well. But that's not the biblical outlook. They're not a necessary evil. They're a necessary good. After all, God doesn't establish evil. He establishes what is good. And in Romans 13, 4, he says specifically, they're there for your good. So let us give an eye towards how every authority in our life is there for our benefit. But that's not to say that they aren't without fault. Every authority still is comprised of sinners, and so there will be fault, and there comes a time for us to speak up against those authorities. There is a very limit to the authorities. Peter is a classic example of speaking up in that regard, so that when he was told to be, silenced, uh, to be silent about Christ, he says, I can't do that. In fact, he famously says in Acts 5.29, we must obey God rather than man. So that when the authorities call upon you to do something that is contrary to the word of God, you must now disobey those earthly authorities and go with what God has said. Now that's a reminder that God is the ultimate authority, and therefore he will also be the one that holds all authorities accountable. Every authority is accountable to the utmost authority. Now that is rather critical for order in society. Historically, within our own land, that has been one of the things to keep our uh, those who are in authority in check because they know they have to give an account to God for how they've used their authority. I will have to give such an account for the authority I've had as father, as pastor, and in other regards as well. But let's rejoice in this. The highest authority, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uses his authority perfectly. The flip side of authority is responsibility. When you have authority over somebody, biblically that means you're responsible for them. So how do, what do you do with your authority? You serve. Think of Jesus again. He has all authority in heaven on, and on earth. And yet what does he say? I come not to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Now that is true authority. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of authority that you have set over us. Work in the midst of all those who have such authority, that they would use it well for those under their authority, that they would be a blessing, giving order, and also taking responsibility for those who've been set under their authority. Let us also rejoice in the authority of Christ our Savior, who comes not to be served, but to serve who gave his life as a ransom for many, so that his authority brings to us life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.